Hey, it's the history guy here. So, it was the year 312 AD, and the Roman Empire was in turmoil. Two rival emperors, Maxentius and Constantine, were vying for control of the empire. The two armies met in a decisive battle at the Milvian Bridge, just outside of Rome. As the battle raged on, Constantine looked up to the sky and saw a vision of a cross, with the words, In this sign, conquer. Inspired by this vision, Constantine ordered his soldiers to paint the symbol of the cross on their shields and banners. With this act, Constantine secured a stunning victory over Maxentius and became the sole ruler of the Roman Empire. Before we delve in, remember to subscribe to the channel never to miss an update of subsequent videos. Let's look into the early life of this emperor, Constantine, and how his reign has brought us to this time of free worship in the world without persecution. Constantine the Great was born in Nisus, which is now known as Niche, Serbia, around AD 272. His father, Constantius Chlorus, was a Roman general, and his mother, Helena, is believed to have come from a humble background. Not much is known about Constantine's early years, but it is likely that he received a good education and was exposed to the workings of the Roman Empire from a young age. When Constantine was still a young man, his father was appointed Caesar, or Deputy Emperor, of the Western Roman Empire. This meant that Constantine was able to accompany his father on military campaigns and gain valuable experience in the art of war. However, Constantine's early life was also marked by political turmoil and uncertainty, as the Roman Empire was in a state of flux and various factions vied for power. Despite these challenges, Constantine would go on to become one of the most influential emperors in Roman history. Legends have it that, Constantine was not his original name. He was born Flavius Valerius Constantinus, but later changed his name to Constantine after becoming emperor. Constantine's mother, Helena, is believed to have been a Christian and may have had a significant influence on his later conversion to Christianity. Constantine's father, Constantius Chlorus, was not married to Helena, and it is unclear whether Constantine was born out of wedlock or not. Constantine spent much of his early life in the court of the Emperor Diocletian, who was known for his persecution of Christians. It is possible that Constantine witnessed some of these persecutions firsthand. Constantine was a skilled military commander from a young age, and is said to have fought in several battles alongside his father. His father, a Roman officer who quickly rose through the ranks to a prestigious position of glory. During this period, the crisis of the 3rd century, the Roman Empire was split into civil war. The crisis finally ended in the 280s, when Emperor Diocletian implemented reforms which split the empire into two allied emperors. In 293, Diocletian deepened these reforms by founding the Tetrarchy, a system where the two co-emperors of would share power with their successors. Following the implementation of the Tetrarchy, Constantius was appointed the successor to one of the co-emperors, Maximian. As a result, his son Constantine received a full and privileged education. Notably, he watched on the sidelines as Emperor Diocletian brutally persecuted Christians in the empire. Growing weak in his old age, Emperor Diocletian resigned his office, driving Maximian to resign too. While Constantius rose to power as co-emperor, Diocletian refused to give Constantine the position of successor, instead pointing a different man to that position. Fleeing from threats to his life, Constantine reached his father Constantius, who was fighting a war in England. However, Constantius became weak during this campaign and soon died. Pressing his claim, Constantine declared himself the successor to his father. The other rulers negotiated. Constantine agreed to only have dominion over Spain, France, and England. The Tetrarchy as spoke of was initiated in AD 293 by Diocletian. Maximian was appointed as co-emperor in the West. Each Augustus, senior emperor, was paired with a Caesar, junior emperor and the intention was to facilitate smoother transitions of power and improve governance. Constantine's father, Constantius Chlorus, held the title of Caesar in the West under Maximian's rule. Constantius's responsibilities included overseeing Britain and Gaul. This position provided Constantine with exposure to the intricacies of imperial governance. In AD 305, the Western Augustus, Constantius Chlorus, died in Eberacum, modern-day York and the troops proclaimed Constantine as his successor. However, the Tetrarchic system was disrupted by internal strife and conflicting loyalties. Despite the Tetrarchy's intended order, 
Constantine's acclamation by the troops in Britain was a pivotal moment. His status as the son of a respected emperor and his military prowess contributed to his legitimacy as a claimant to the imperial title. Constantine's ascent was not uncontested. Other claimants vied for power, including Maxentius, the son of the Western Augustus Maximian. The ensuing power struggles led to a series of civil wars. The conflict climaxed at the Battle of the Milvian Bridge, where Constantine faced Maxentius. According to tradition, Constantine experienced a vision of a cross with the words, In hoc signo vinces, in this sign, you will conquer. Constantine claimed to have seen the Chiro, a Christian monogram representing the first two letters of the Greek word for Christ. Following his vision, Constantine adopted this symbol as a standard for his army. In preparation for the Battle of the Milvian Bridge against Maxentius, Constantine ordered the Chiro symbol to be painted on the shields of his soldiers. It became a prominent emblem on the military standards, symbolizing divine favor and protection. Then, here comes the D-Day. The day of battle between Constantine and Maxentius. The Battle of the Milvian Bridge took place on October 28, 312 AD, and it was a significant confrontation to bring an end to the civil unrest in the Roman Empire. This was because Maxentius, the son of the former Western Roman Emperor Maximian, had declared himself emperor in Rome in 306 AD, defying the Tetrarchic Order. Constantine, the son of the Western Caesar Constantius Chlorus, had been proclaimed emperor by his troops in Britain after his father died in 306 AD. This declaration conflicted with the Tetrarchic system, leading to conflicts between rival claimants. Maxentius controlled Rome and fortified the city against potential invasions. In the meantime, Constantine was consolidating his power in the western provinces. So in 312 AD Constantine, having secured alliances and support, marched towards Rome to confront Maxentius. The two forces were on a collision course, and the Milvian Bridge, situated over the Tiber River, became a crucial strategic point. This place was crucial for Maxentius due to the strategic style he adopted in the battle. The Milvian Bridge, known as Pons Milvius, in Latin and Ponte Milvio in Italian, was a crucial crossing point over the Tiber River, situated a few miles north of Rome. The bridge connected the western and northern regions with the city itself. Maxentius, who was the emperor controlling Rome, sought to defend the city against Constantine's advancing forces. The Milvian Bridge provided a strategic choke point that allowed Maxentius to control access to Rome and impede Constantine's progress. Maxentius had fortified the northern approaches to Rome, including the Milvian Bridge, as part of his defensive strategy. By choosing to engage Constantine's forces at this location, Maxentius aimed to use the natural barrier of the Tiber River to his advantage and capitalize on the defensive structures around the bridge. He Milvian Bridge was a relatively narrow structure, especially when compared to the width of the Tiber River. This narrow passage limited the space for maneuvering during the battle, creating a situation where the forces would be tightly confined during the engagement. Bridges over major rivers were strategic assets in ancient warfare, as they facilitated the movement of armies and supplies. By controlling the Milvian Bridge, Maxentius aimed to control one of the key river crossings, preventing Constantine from easily bypassing or circumventing his defenses, just like the Battle of Thymopylae, which happened in Greece. Yeah, I'm talking about the battle between the Spartans' 300 men and Xerxes' troops. The same idea I think Maxentius wanted to adopt here. And also, for him, he was unlucky. As the battle progressed, Maxentius's defensive strategy faltered. According to historical accounts, a portion of the bridge either collapsed or was intentionally destroyed, and Maxentius, along with a significant number of his troops, drowned in the Tiber River. Constantine emerged victorious at the Battle of the Milvian Bridge. This triumph solidified his claim to the title of Western Roman Emperor. Following his victory, Constantine entered Rome in triumph and he was acknowledged as the legitimate ruler of the Western Roman Empire. The Senate and the people of Rome officially recognized him as the Augustus. The Battle of the Milvian Bridge marked a turning point in Roman history and played a crucial role in shaping the reign of Constantine the Great. It also had a profound impact on the status of Christianity within the Roman Empire. Talk of the Christians living in the empire. This is what Constantine did for them after securing his place as the emperor whom he thinks he was chosen by God.
Constantine's conversion to Christianity, and his belief that he was chosen by God, played a significant role in shaping his policies towards Christians in the Roman Empire. After securing his place as the emperor, Constantine implemented several measures that were favorable to Christians. One of Constantine's earliest and most significant acts was the issuance of the Edict of Milan in 313 AD, which he co-authored with his co-emperor Licinius. This edict granted religious tolerance to all religions within the Roman Empire, officially ending the persecution of Christians. It allowed Christians to practice their faith openly without fear of retribution. Constantine returned confiscated properties and assets that had been seized from Christians during periods of persecution. This restitution aimed to restore the Christian community to a position of stability and prominence within the empire. Constantine supported the construction of Christian churches and basilicas. Notable among these is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, believed to be built under Constantine's orders. Additionally, the Lateran Palace in Rome was converted into a church complex, becoming the center of the Bishop of Rome, the Pope. Constantine convened the First Council of Nicaea in 3 and 25 AD, while the primary purpose of the council was to address theological controversies within Christianity, it also served to unify the Christian community under imperial patronage. The Nicene Creed, formulated during this council, became a foundational statement of Christian faith. Constantine appointed Christians to key administrative positions in his government, reflecting a shift in the empire's leadership. Eusebius of Caesarea, a Christian bishop and historian, was one such advisor who enjoyed the emperor's favor. Constantine issued a decree designating Sunday, as a day of rest for all citizens in the empire. This was in line with Christian practices, as Sunday was the day of worship and commemoration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yet, there is some controversy surrounding this in our modern day. People think Constantine's Sunday service has something to do with the Roman god, Sol Invictus, worship and not the Christian god. Here is why. Sunday was considered the day of the sun and its observance often involved rituals and ceremonies dedicated to the sun god. Constantine, in his efforts to promote religious harmony within the diverse Roman Empire, may have engaged in a form of syncretism. This could involve incorporating elements of existing religious traditions, including the worship of the sun god, to create a more inclusive religious environment. Constantine's conversion to Christianity is debated. Some see it as a sincere belief, while others view it as politically motivated. He moved the capital of the Roman Empire from Rome to Byzantium, renaming it Constantinople in 330 AD. Constantinople's strategic location facilitated trade and defense, becoming a crucial center for the Byzantine Empire. Constantine's reign saw the construction of significant architectural projects, including the Basilica of Maxentius and the Arch of Constantine in Rome. The First Council of Nicaea in 325 AD convened by Constantine, aimed to address theological disputes within Christianity. The Nicene Creed, a statement of Christian faith, was formulated during the council. Despite his Christian affiliations, Constantine retained the title of Pontifex Maximus, the head of the Roman state religion. His rule marked the beginning of the Constantinian dynasty. Constantine's military achievements include campaigns against the Franks, Alemanni, and the Sarmatians. The donation of Constantine, a forged document, claimed that Constantine had granted the Pope authority over the Western Roman Empire. His family life was complex, with multiple wives and children, including sons who succeeded him.